Hello, I'm JW. Today we're looking at the CNC machine and we're going to be uh, drilling some holes in the base of the machine to install some threaded inserts. And these will be used to attach uh, clamps and the like when actually uh, machining things. Because at the moment the uh, base of the machine is just a flat sheet of material. It's actually melamine face chipboard. And of course there's no way to attach any clamps or anything else to that. Now of course there are several ways you can uh, do this. There are things like T-slot uh, tables you can buy. Those are going to be horribly expensive for a machine of this size. I uh, did find somewhere that sold aluminium ones, but you're looking at nearly a thousand pounds, so that's not going to happen. And of course, you can buy those tracks that you sort of cut in and then just screw in place, and the things go in position. But again, they seem to be rather expensive. If you buy them in the UK, they seem to be about uh, twenty pounds for a two-foot length, and as we'd need probably at least ten of those, then uh, again, that's like two hundred pounds plus. And then, of course, you're compelled to buy the clamps on the same manufacturer, which costs even more. And even the ones from China are quite pricey because of the length of them. That obviously uh, impacts on the shipping. So, uh, threaded insert it is. So, I'll just show you how they work on this uh, piece of scrap material here. Now, here are the uh, threaded inserts here. And uh, these are got this coarse thread on the outside, which goes into a hole in the material. This is just a piece of scrap for test purposes. And inside, I've got this hexagonal piece at the end, which is what you use to put them in place using a key like that. And then inside there's a metric thread cut, there's actually an M6, and then of course any M6 uh, piece of material will just thread straight in. And I've got a piece of uh, M6 threaded rod here, so once these are screwed into the table, then these of course will just thread in there like that. And of course the point being that because it's metal you can uh, take them in and out many thousands of times without them wearing out. Whereas, of course, if you uh, thread into this material several times, it just breaks and fractures away and falls to pieces. So, uh, basically, it's pretty straightforward. Just drill a hole, uh, eight millimetres in this case, and then it just, just places into the hole, and then it's just a question of tightening up with the uh, appropriate tool. And uh, these actually go down so they're flush with the surface, and then that's uh, installed. So, uh, fairly straightforward. Hey, this is uh, similar material to the base of the machine, uh, just a bit of scrap for testing purposes. Now, of course, I could get the uh, drill out and then just go and drill all the holes manually after marking out the grid and all of that bother, but uh, that would be pointless because uh, the machine itself can actually drill its own holes. So, rather than messing about with templates and all that, I've uh, just done up a program to actually drill the holes and put them all in the correct places. Now this is Mac 4, which we've seen in previous uh, episodes, and I've loaded the program in already, and it's basically going to drill a hole at each one of these points uh, here in red, and these are 8mm diameter obviously because that's the size that uh, is required, and I'll set these at 18mm uh, spacing, so it's basically 80mm between that direction and also 80mm in this direction, and also it means if we make any fixtures with two or more mounting points they can go either way on the table, so obviously fairly handy. Now you can see the program in here, and this was actually created in Fusion 360, and I haven't done a video on that, but if you want to see how that was done then I can do a video on that, so just put a comment in the description if you would be wanting to see that. So essentially there's the uh, drilling operation there, and then all of the various coordinates that we'll be drilling at, and as you can see they're all, all in multiples of 80 millimeters. first one of course being at zero. So there we go, quite a short program there, nothing really uh, too surprising in that. So here is the uh, table and machine, the origin is basically over there. And uh, the reason for the 80mm is it's got this uh, bar that goes right across the middle. You can see the uh, screws there that hold it in position. And this is uh, almost 60mm wide, so it just happens that the 80mm spacing will put a screw insert on this side of it and this side, and therefore spacing in the other directions. There are some more at the ends, but they don't apply because we're not going to be putting fixtures right up at the ends anyhow. And it also works out fairly well in the other direction. And there is a space under the table here, so the holes are actually going to be drilled right through. And that means the inserts will also be hollow all the way through. And we're doing that because if they were just blind holes or if they just drilled to the depth and then closed at the bottom, any time you machine something, the holes would just fill up with crud and then you'd have to go around and try and clean them out. Whereas if they're through holes, any junk will just fall through and obviously they won't be blocked up. Now the machine is currently in the machine zero position and you can see the limit switch here, it's just right on that uh, at the moment. And again, the same with the uh, Z-axis and the other one you can't see, it's underneath the top there. And you see the spindle is actually slightly overhanging the edge. And of course that's not where we're going to start uh, cutting from. 
and have a look under there, you can see that green dot in there. And that's actually the position of the first hole, basically reference from the edge and the side over there. And I've set that up in the program to be the essentially the zero point, so all the other holes are referenced from that, and therefore just coming out in uh, this direction and of course across there as well. And it's going to cover pretty much the whole of this. It actually only goes up to about uh, this point here. It doesn't go all the way to the end because the spindle won't actually reach that way because the gantry obviously is one-sided. So of course that's why it slightly overhangs at this end and therefore doesn't go all the way to the other side. So I've just place the actual drill bit on the zero point and that's, that's the green dot under the bit there, you can't actually see it. And for the Z, just going to use this bit of paper. You can get automatic height setters, but uh, we don't have one of those at the moment. So at the moment that's just uh, dragging there, it's a bit difficult to see, so that essentially is the zero point. Now of course normally this would be the top of whatever material you're going to be cutting. In this case it's the top of the actual bottom of the machine, but that's fine because that's obviously what we want to cut in this case. <laughs> So that's all the holes drilled in the base, and uh, nothing broke, nothing flew apart, and nothing killed anybody, so that's a good start. And uh, whether those speeds are optimal or not is not entirely clear, but uh, the point was it was a sensible speed to get the holes drilled in, because of course with the uh, drilling the machine itself you kind of only get one chance there, and if it uh, decided to destroy something, well unfortunately you're going to have to buy a whole new piece of material for the bottom. So uh, all done successfully, and now I just need to screw all of those inserts into those holes, which obviously will take quite a while because the machine of course can't do that. So I'll do that and obviously not make a video of that because nobody wants to see that. However, if you did want to see how the program was actually done in Fusion 360, then uh, put a comment in the description to this video, and if enough people are interested then I can do a video on that separately. But uh, that's pretty much it for this time, so until next time, thanks for watching.